Hello and welcome to Baiju's IES. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which amongst the following is the string puppet native to the state of Rajasthan? Kalasutri Bahulya, Saki Kandai, Putla Nach, Kathputli. The answer to this question is Kathputli. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of the Kathputli. What are the different types of string puppets that are present in India? We have Kathputli, which is native to the state of Rajasthan. We have Kundai, which is to the state of Odisha. Gumbayata, which is to the state of Karnataka and Bumalatam, which is to the state of Tamil Nadu. And when we look into the practice question, we have Putla Nach. We also have Kalasutri Bahulya. This is part of your assignment where you have to put on the comment section which string puppet is practiced in which state. All these are the string puppets, but you have to put on the comment section which state practices Putla Nach and Kalsutri Bahulya. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statement with respect to ICON mission. It is a collaboration between European Space Agency and its Russian equivalent Roscosmos. Its objective is to help understand the origin and evolution of the solar system. Which of the above statements is are correct? The answer to this is none. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of ICON mission. When we look into the first statement, it says it is a collaboration between European Space Agency and Roscosmos. This is a wrong statement. Why? Because ICON mission is a mission of NASA. So the first statement is wrong. And when we look into the second statement, the second statement says its objective is to help understand the origin and evolution of the solar system. But this mission is not about understanding the origin and evolution of solar system, but instead it is about finding out what is happening in the ionosphere. What is this ICON mission? It stands for Ionospheric Connection Explorer, which is a satellite designed to investigate changes in the ionosphere of the Earth. Why is studying this part of the atmosphere important? That is because we have the terrestrial weather, which meets the space weather in the ionosphere. Why is it important? That is because of the technological updates. We have the radio communications, which is hosted in this particular region. We also have the GPS signals which also travel in this region. If there is the space weather which could interfere with any of the technological related impact, it could harm the technological progress. So understanding this region is very important so that we can prevent the distortions or even disruptions of the signal in the ionosphere. Which is why we have NASA come up with this particular mission to understand the complicated region of ionosphere so that we can ultimately mitigate the impacts on our technology, communication system as well as society. It is this that we have to understand with respect to the ICON mission. Now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to Antarctic fur seals, which of the following statements is are correct? Antarctic fur seals are widely distributed in the Southern Ocean near the Antarctic Convergence. Its IUCN status is vulnerable. They do not have any natural predators. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is one only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of Antarctic fur seal. So let us try and understand what are these options. When it comes to Antarctic fur seal, they are widely distributed, yes, in the Southern Ocean near the Antarctic Convergence. What is this Antarctic Convergence? This is an area as shown in the picture. What happens? It is also known as Antarctic Polar Front where it marks the outer edge of the Antarctica. So this is one region where you have two characteristics coming into picture where you have the warm water coming from the northern part you have the cold water which comes from the southern part of antarctica they mix they mingle and they also sink beneath the warmer sub antarctic water which is why it is called as antarctic convergence region it is nothing but a boundary line that separates the antarctic and the sub antarctic regions so this particular species mostly lives in this particular area around the antarctic convergence so the first statement is right when it comes to the second statement 
statement. Its IUCN status is vulnerable. This is a wrong statement. Why? Because its IUCN status happens to be least concern. The third statement says they do not have any natural predators. This is a wrong statement because they are hunted by the sharks, killer whales, so on and so forth. What are the diet patterns of these Antarctic fur seals? They feed on krills. About 95% of their diet is basically on the krills. They also feed on the squid and occasionally they may also feed on penguins as well. Now let's look into the next practice question. Colony collapse disorder, an abnormal phenomenon is associated with marine mammals where underwater noise interferes with the key life functions, birds unable to trace their migratory paths, corals resulting in coral bleaching, honeybees where majority of worker bees disappear. What does colony collapse disorder mean? It basically deals with honeybees where majority of the worker bees suddenly disappear. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of the honeybees. Let us try and understand what is this colony collapse disorder. This is a phenomenon where you have the working bees, you also have the queen bees and you also have nurse bees as well. So in this particular segmentation you have the working bees which go collect the nectar they come back to the beehive and they also put in these nectars into the beehive as well but suddenly the colony collapse disorder means that this entire colony where you have the honeybees the working bees all of a sudden disappear they do not come back to the beehive that is what is called as colony collapse disorder so there is a collapse of the colony of the honeybees which is resulting in a disorder and as a result Majority of the worker bees in a colony disappear, leaving behind a queen, plenty of food and a few nurse bees to take care for the remaining immature bees and the queen. Why is it happening? What are the various reasons causing the colony collapse disorder? There are multiple reasons to it. The primary reasons include use of the pesticides. When we use the pesticides, they feed on these pesticides and ultimately they get exposed to the pesticides, applied to the crops and this can actually impact the honeybees. Apart from this primary cause, there can be poor nutrition as well. They would not be getting the nutrition that is required and this will result in stress to the honeybees and also honeybees also face stress as well. Why stress? That is due to multiple commercial management practices. They are constantly moved from one place to another. They are transported from one place to another. They are moved from one location to another. This might also result in stress for the honeybees resulting in colony collapse disorder. Now let's look into some of the information which can be important from the preliminary examination point of view. We have Ajaz Patel who was able able to take 10 wickets in one of the innings against India. This is a major achievement. He was able to bowl some great spinners and he happened to take the wickets of Indian batsmen. Just like he bowling some spinners, UPSC can also bowl a googly and can ask some questions which is least expected. Here we are giving you some information which UPSC can ask you in the form of a googly. Because UPSC in the past year has asked some important sports related questions, you will have to remember that Ajaz Patel becomes the third bowler in test history after England's Jim Laker and Anil Kumble of India to take 10 wickets in an innings. This is one of the important pointers for the preliminary examination. This is taken from yesterday's newspaper. What are we speaking about? We we are speaking about a butterfly. The butterfly is named as chocolate bordered flitter. Where was it seen? It was seen in North Sikkim and its scientific name includes Zographetus zongiasis. Then we have two butterflies called as Sahyadri birdwing and Malabar tree nymph and this article here makes a mention of one of the awards called as Cyprian Foyce Prize. So remember Cyprian Foyce Prize was given to an Indian American mathematician called as Nikhil Srivatsava. This prize was established in 2020 in memory of Cyprian Foyce and this is awarded by the American Mathematical Society. Remember these can can also be asked by UPSC. We do not know, but we are just expecting that UPSC might bowl a googly, just like Ajaz Patel bowled beautiful spinners. Now let's look into the next practice question. 
it is possible to produce algae based biofuels but what is are the likely limitations of developing countries in promoting this industry production of algae based biofuels is possible in seas only and not on continents setting up and engineering the algae based biofuel production requires high level of expertise or technology until the construction is completed economically viable production necessitates the setting up of large scale facilities which may raise ecological and social concerns select the correct answer using the code given below the answer to this is 2 and 3 only why that is because the production of algae based biofuels can happen both on seas as well as on the continents which is on the land so the answer would be 2 and 3 and this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2017 now let's look into the fact of the day the fact of the day for today's discussion is greater tripraland let us try and understand what is this greater tripraland concept all about we have states in india these states in india can be broken down into one or more states you can also have states being turned into union territories as well or some parts of the state can be given to an other state as well and who decides it it is the parliament people can voice their opinion because they have cultural differences in that particular region they might have language differences or there can be developmental issues in that particular state so what they feel is that they are not able to get economic prosperity or the division of politics is happening in such a way that one region is getting more resources at the cost of the other this is why people come on the roads voice their opinion want to create a separate state for themselves one such proposal that we have in the state of tripura is what is called as tripraland so what is this tripraland this is a proposed state that people are fighting for especially with respect to the issues faced by the indigenous tripuri people because they have cultural differences because they feel that developmental issues are not being taken by the indigenous tripuri people and because they also want a new state established there is an issue and which is why they are asking for a tripraland what is this tripraland we have the state of tripura this is the entire state of tripura take away these green areas the rest of the areas where you have huge population of the tribal belts in the state of tripura is what is called as tripraland so creation of a new land called as tripura land is one of the proposals made by the indigenous tribal people this is what is called as tripura land so you have the existing state of tripura in the existing state of tripura there is a concentration of the tribals these tribals where they are concentrated want a separate land separate state called as the tripura land but what is this greater tripura land when we speak about tripura land it is about taking out certain regions from the existing state of tripura but greater tripura land also means there are tribes that is the tripuris who might be present in the state of assam they might be present in the state of mizoram and there are few people who are also present in the state of bangladesh as well so making sure that all these areas are connected is one of the objectives of greater tripura land so when it comes to tripura land it is about carving out a state from the state of tripura but when it comes to greater tripura land it is also about bringing in those areas which are also present in assam mizoram and in fact in bangladesh as well when did this demand originate tripura was a kingdom which was ruled by manikya dynasty from the late 13th century until the signing of the instrument of accession with the indian government on october 15 1949 as part of an assignment you have to put on the comment section who is the first king of manikya dynasty and which are the official languages that are present in the state of tripura so what are the issues that these people are currently facing one is for the economic prosperity second is about demographic changes and third is also about the political advantage what is it about economic prosperity how is it related to demography when we speak about the state of tripura what we have is two major societies one led by the bengali population the other led by the indigenous people who are tripuris in majority population what is the difference back in the year 1881 the tribal population was about 63.77% the population of tribals in tripura was down to 31.8 80 by the year 2011 so what we see is that there is a major demographic change as a result according to them 
they allege that it is the Bengali people who are able to hold the political sway and there is not much of development in the tribal heartlands and this has led to not economic empowerment and they are at the control of few other people in the society. So what they want is the establishment of the greater Tipraland so that they would be able to run their own affairs at the political level, have their own developmental purposes for the indigenous tribes in that state and what they want is more economic empowerment empowerment. What has been done to address the grievances of the indigenous community? Previously, we have the Tripura Tribal Areas Autonomous District Council which have been established where they would be able to ensure development, cultural affiliations, take their cultural heritage rights into prominence and such has been established and promoted through the Tribal Areas Autonomous District Council. There is reservation also provided in the 60 assembly seats where about 20 seats are reserved only for the STs, that is the scheduled tribes. In spite of it, they feel that there is a problem when it comes to the political opportunities, economic empowerment and cultural differences, which is why they are asking for the establishment of a greater Tipralat. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this article. So, this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.